Right guys, what is going on? Buster Barnes here, bringing you the latest episode of my FIFA 21 West Ham career mode. Last episode, unfortunately, we did get eliminated in the FA Cup. Quite an awful way to do so as well, losing on penalties to Southampton. Still haven't got over that yet, to be honest. A very, very disappointing um, attempt by Fabianski to save that last penalty. You can't really blame it on the goalkeeper though when it gets to that stage. You can also probably blame me a bit, but hey, when in doubt, we all do love to blame the goalkeeper. But the only hope we now have of getting Europa League football is, I believe, by potentially getting 7th place. Now, we would need 6th to confirm it, I think. However, Spurs did win the Carabao Cup this season, and in the FA Cup are still teams like Spurs and Chelsea as well. So that could mean that 7th place could, in fact, be enough for us to get Europa League football if some results do go our way. Sixth looks very unlikely that we will get. However, if we do win our next game, we can potentially jump to seventh place or probably eighth place in terms of goal difference. But that game is, as you can see, away against Chelsea. We know what happens when we face them last time in the league. We lost 6-1, which um, was not great at all. But if you guys are enjoying this episode, please be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more FIFA 21 content. This season should be over within the next three episodes. After that, we will be getting into Season 2 as well, so I hope you guys do stick along for that journey. But yeah, without further ado, nothing else to talk about, so let's get on to our game away at Chelsea. Hopefully, we can pick up an upset. Right, guys, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before, but one player I was thinking about was Jared Bowen. Gone up by two overalls despite not really playing. Now, I was thinking how I can get him into the team more, as I know that West Ham fans must be taking a liking to him as um, he is breaking through your team. I was wondering if you guys thought that maybe I could see him turning into a central attacking midfielder, because if we therefore did that, maybe he would get a bit more game time, could come into the central midfield. Maybe if we change him to attacking midfield, we can then go and change him to centre mid. It will only take two weeks for him to change to that position. So it wouldn't take that long. So I do want you guys to let me know if you think that changing him to an attacking midfielder would be in his best interest. It says centre mid would take 98 weeks, but I'm not sure if it would take less after changing him to a central attacking mid. So I guess we'd have to see. But um, yeah, he's not really getting many minutes at the moment. So I'm wondering if you guys would like to see him change position and potentially find some more minutes on the pitch. He still probably wouldn't be starting, but probably more opportunities to come off the bench as he could maybe take the role of someone like a Wilshere who um, has actually left West Ham in real life. So we'll probably look to offload him when it comes to summer anyway. So do let me know what you guys want to do regarding Jared Bowen. But as I said, our next game is going to be away against Chelsea, who are currently in second place. So they'll be looking to um, improve their bid to get in Champions League football. Looking at their team, Dubois, didn't know they had him. And um, Paulista at centre-back, Correa up front. Still Kepa in goal, Moses at right wing. So maybe not the strongest Chelsea team. They could be rotating a bit. Um, or they've just sold a bunch of their players for some reason, maybe some injuries. But that is the team that we are going to go with, our strongest team, in my opinion. Some former Chelsea players in there. Actually, now that I've said that, I've just noticed that Loftus-Cheek Probably shouldn't be starting. I know that this game doesn't mind, but if a player's on loan, they really shouldn't be playing most likely. So um, I am actually going to take Loftus Cheek off. I'm not actually going to start Noble, but I'll put him on there. I'll put him on the bench. I'm actually going to start Billy Gilmore. Why not? The former Chelsea guy, maybe he's got some revenge in his mind for them letting him go to us. The ops not on the greatest fitness, but we'll have to deal with that. Jeremy Boger, former Chelsea player as well so um, yeah maybe we can see some um, revenge occur in this game i mean we'll need revenge anyway from when they beat us 6-1 but yeah legendary difficulty kevin fenn the referee let's get into it okay guys here we go stanford bridge playing against chelsea i just realized that they actually chose me to wear my away kit which is a little bit strange a light blue versus a dark blue we can easily enough tell who the teams are though so that shouldn't be too much of an issue probably would have made more sense to wear my home kit however but um yeah, this is going to definitely prove to be a difficult game. Chelsea do have some quality on their team, and they're not going to try and let us through, likely at all. But that was actually quite a nice ball from Fredericks over to Sar. Sar crosses it in to Calvert-Lewin, who 
Early on, guys, the early goals are back. Calvert-Lewin, easily it seems, walks through the Chelsea defence, has a fight with the flag at the corner, and um, yeah, that seems pretty easy. Alonso at left back, that's the issue there. We all know what that means. But the header off the post and in, very nice indeed. And it was Alonso getting caught out at left back, guys, and that is why Chelsea should not be playing Alonso at all. Calvert-Lewin not being marked at all by Paulista. Strange signing for them to sign him. Um, but um, either way, it's still very early in the game. Lampard not happy at all. That is going to be 1-0 very early on. Calvert-Lewin is gassed. Five goals in the league for him. Quite the improvement considering his start or what he started at when he did join us. Over Kavak with a very nice header that he wins there. And um, this West Ham team. West Ham do actually seem to be Chelsea's bogey team in real life. So it wouldn't make or be against too much sense if we did in fact defeat them. But there's another ball in. Can we keep hold of that? Saar looks to cross it in. Over to Calvert-Lewin again. And oh my god guys, what the hell is going on? In 10 minutes, two goals down. Calvert-Lewin there. Again, with the karate poses, looking to start some fights. West Ham fans going crazy. And um, I did mention that West Ham are in fact Chelsea's bogey team in real life. Now we did lose 6-1 to be fair. But that header by Calvert-Lewin, very weird heading animation. The captain Thiago Silva could not find his man. Very nicely moved. That's such a weird animation. Kepa, Arifa Balaga in goal. Yeah, maybe not uh, the best choice from them. But Calvert-Lewin, either way, has a double of headers within the first 10 minutes. And this is definitely not how I imagine this game going, guys. We seem to be finding it harder now against the lower league teams than the higher ones. But it's still quite early in the game, so don't want to speak too soon. And that was a bit too easy from him. We do manage to block the shot, though. That was very lucky. He probably could have tried to shoot before. With a player of his quality, he probably would have been able to find the net. But in either way, we will not complain. Suchek now over to Calvert-Lewin. Suchek hits it over to Saar. Saar now going to try and get the ball. Over to Fredericks. Nice little back heel from Saar. Saar's going to go for another cross. And Calvert-Lewin! <laughs> the cross from Fredericks and Calvert-Lewin is 3-0 up. What the hell is going on, guys? This is a vengeance. This is West Ham looking back at that result against Chelsea, the 6-1, and saying, no, we are a different team now. We have improved. And what is this? Same difficulty, same everything. Three headers from Calvert-Lewin. And I mean, it's all been down Alonso's side, guys. Alonso's side, he's got the high-low work rate, at least back when I checked. Kepper in goal. Um, the goalkeepers still, I don't think, have been fixed in this game, to be fair. But either way, we were not finding this sort of success. Gilmore there, celebrating with Calvert-Lewin. I wish Gilmore had a player face, but um, I guess under today's circumstances, it might have been hard to get new ones in. But um, Calvert-Lewin has got a first-half hat-trick. What minute is it? 24th minute. We could be repaying Chelsea for um, the uh, for the humiliation that they caught us with. And we've won the ball again with Suchek. What the hell is going on? I have no clue. Over to Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin is through. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> What the hell is going on? <laughs> Calvin Lewin sips the tea. I mean, there is going to be some gossip after this match. Well, this is Chelsea who are in second place. First time shot. I didn't even think that was going to go in. I just honestly couldn't believe the luck of what we were facing. Thiago Silva, has he gone down in overall or something? I have no clue. I might actually have a look at the Chelsea team after this and see what is going on there. Lampard really not having a great time. This is one of those pinnacle moments in the season where you bid your title chances farewell. And like that, Calvert-Lewin was on four goals before he started this match. Now he's on eight. He's probably in the top scorer's list. And Jesus Christ, Chelsea not looking too great at all. Can't oh, and that is actually going to be a um, free kick. But now Alonso's taken the free kick and he hits the bar. Jesus Christ. That is one thing that we all know Alonso is good at, is free kicks despite him definitely not being so good at defending. Um, that's definitely to say the least. And um, that was not a great ball from Calvert-Lewin, though. Alonso actually intercepts. Diop just gets skipped past by Havertz, who goes for the chip. And oh my god, Fabianski with the last-ditch save. Last-ditch tackle by Rice. Oh my god, this would be so frustrating if I was watching this in real life, obviously, as you guys can tell by my shirt. But this isn't it. We are trying to win this game. We're trying to get a clean sheet. This would really help out our goal difference, which could become crucial to us getting 7th place. However, I have said that. And Correa, Chelsea's new signing, has pulled a goal back. Now I'm quite glad I didn't simulate this, as I do think we will probably be able to hold on. But their new number 9 getting the goal. And um, 
Yeah, probably they should be trying to get back to the centre circle. They still have another three goals they need to score if they do want a point. But that was quite simple enough. Some good work by them getting past my team. And that is going to be 4-1. But hopefully it is still too late for them to surmount any type of comeback. Um, and I believe that is going to be full time. It is. Dominic Calvert-Lewin scoring four goals. Um, absolutely amazing game for him. 10 out of 10 rating. Let's see what even happens. He got the goals. Four goals for him. Assists for Saar, for Fredericks, and for Suchek as well. Absolutely amazing performance from Calvert-Lewin. And um, yeah, guys, you know what? I was, had a little bit of a belief that we could beat Chelsea. But 4-0, absolutely mental. And um, we had five shots on target. Chelsea had eight. So maybe you could argue that it shouldn't have been the correct scoreline. But either way, I'll completely take it. 35% possession as well. Um... Yeah, let's see if we can um, redo this performance in whatever our next game may be. Okay, so Diop won't be available for our next game. I guess there wasn't a reset, or maybe it's just not included in the game anyway. So he'll be suspended for our next match. Hopefully, shouldn't cause too much of an issue. Not sure who our next game is actually going to be against. But as you can see the table now, we are in 8th place. It is all very close though. Um, Arsenal, who are in 6th, do have a game in hand, so... It's unlikely, even with loads of wins, we'll catch them. But hopefully, if we can just pip Wolves to 7th, that could potentially be enough for us to get through to the, or to the Europa League. Um, Diop also um, sent me an email saying thanks for the first time football. That is all fine. He won't be starting the next match, though, um, due to his fouls. But, um, yeah, guys, without further ado, let's just keep going, see if we can keep this um, win streak rolling into our next game. Okay, so our next game is actually going to be against Leicester, so I wasn't so sure if it was important or not. Turns out it's a very important game. I think Fulham as well lost whatever their next game was. So um, if we actually do look at this, we can pull away from Fulham. We can also pull away more from Leicester if we do win this game. And maybe depending on what happens with Wolves, we could even skip them. So this is... A very crucial game for us, as probably will all the rest of the season's games be. But um, we did just do a really good performance against Chelsea. That was away, though, and we seem to be doing a bit better away. But, um, yeah, Diop will not be able to play, so I will have to be bringing in Kuasi to replace him. Hopefully, he can have a good performance, which will be against a Leicester team, which, if you guys remember, I believe beat us 2-1 last time we faced them in the reverse fixture. And we actually got a penalty in the 90th minute and actually missed. So, um... Hopefully we don't see any unfortunate drama unfolding. And um, yeah, let's get into the highlights. We've got the ball now with Bunda. And we do dispossess him with Masuaku. Very decent from us. Boga now has the ball. He's not going to be able to get past him probably. But he can maybe try and run down the wing. And he does get fouled. And that should maybe be a foul for us. Either way, we're going to keep going. Boga's now got the ball out wide. Over to Suchek. Suchek now over to Loftus-Cheek. Loftus-Cheek is going to keep going. He's going to go. He's going to pass it to Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin's going to need to shoot. And Calvert-Lewin scores. And I did not think we were going to score there, guys. Literally at all. Um, Calvert-Lewin there. Just using his physicality. Using his strength to shrug past whoever that defender was. Might have been Nastasic. And, um, yeah, to be honest, I thought the ship was going to get caught. So just did the pass. As you can see, him trying to get full off. He doesn't. Really nice finish into the bottom left corner, and yeah, it was Nastasic, can't fight him off, Nastasic is not the most physical defender, so it does make sense, Schmeichel just can't reach the ball, and that is going to be another fairly early goal for us, and um, hopefully this is the start of a win streak that can bring us to at least 7th place, 9 goals in the league for Calvert-Lewin so far, and how many games that must be, I have no clue, probably only like 4 or something, but um, yeah, very early on, still 75 minutes to play. Going to try and poke a ball through to Tielemans. Madison now skips past. Kouassi. Kouassi just can't do enough. And Loren does bury it. Bottom left corner. I thought that I'd made the tackle there, but it was just too late slightly. And um, yeah, Loren, who I have no clue who he is, does score. Leicester fans rejoice. And um, yeah, that is going to be the equaliser. One all. And not much Fabianza could do about that, to be fair. Decent pass in by Madison. Just skips past Kabak. And, um, yeah, unfortunate by Kouassi, they just couldn't get there in time. Four goals in the Premier League. Yeah, well, I tell you what, my strikers have a combined, like, 33. So what do you even think you're doing, mate? Passed by Harvey Barnes. Tielemans now. 
And I think that is... Is that going to be a penalty? It might be. And, um, yeah, it just takes him down. I thought he got the ball. No, he didn't. He just took him down. And that's going to be another penalty to Leicester. This seems familiar, doesn't it? From the spot, our Leicester in the 90th minute. I was confused. I didn't fully know if that was going to be one or not. They go bottom right. I went left. And Loren, I was just taking the mickey out of him for barely scoring any goals. And he scored a double against us. Wait, guys, where is he going? Where is he going? He's running to his manager. <laughs> but he gives Brendan Rodgers a hug after we did that deal. Sold him battle um, We're seeing Rodgers again in all his glory. And, um, yeah, not great now. We really do not need Leicester getting a win over us in this game. That would not be great, especially because of what our next game is. Which I'm not going to mention yet, guys, but... Um, it is not an easy one. Uh, oh, they've got one. Have they brought on Slomani? I think Leicester have brought Slomani on after Lorenz got two goals. That is very strange from them. We've made the tackle by Calvert-Lewin. And um, he is just going to... Oh, my God. What is going on? Calvert-Lewin there. Schmeichel makes the clearance. But can we keep that in? And um, We do fight for it. I think that might be a throw to them. No, it's not, actually. We've got the ball. No clue what their choice was there. But Saar is going to go over to Federicks. Federicks going to cross it in to Calvert-Lewin who scores a header and that's 2-2 guys and I have no clue what Leicester have done. Why have they brought off Loren for Slomani? They might have even made other changes as well. That's very strange tactics from Brendan Rodgers indeed but I'm not going to complain. We're now 2 all in the game very nicely. You can see the players running in making the runs. Federicks over to Calvert-Lewin who just glances it into the back of the net. He is still continuing his form. Ten goals now in the Premier League. This is a ridiculous form from him. Whoever suggested for me to get Calvert-Lewin, well done. Um, that is definitely a brilliant shout. Antonio, I mean, I felt bad dropping him, but I mean, when Calvert-Lewin is showing this sort of form, you can't really blame me to Calvert-Lewin, though. And this is some decent play. Calvert-Lewin up over to Boga. Boga, maybe one of his last actions of the match. He's going to have to commit. Um, not sure. He's king over to Masu Haku. Masuaku to Declan Rice, Calvert-Lewin, over to Loftus-Cheek, Loftus-Cheek in the bottom left corner, and when we need him most, Loftus-Cheek always scores the important goals, great hold up by, by Calvert-Lewin, and Loftus-Cheek makes it 3-2, from 2-1 down to 3-2, this is really the comeback story of West Ham, even this whole series, you know, the start of the season we were losing games like this, now we're winning, I don't want to speak too soon, obviously, because you may only still get a point if Leicester do come at us but nice finish by Loftus-Cheek and that is brilliant 83rd minute eight goals for him in the Premier League gone a little bit unnoticed there but he has been a decent signing on loan Boga comes on for Erzie I'm actually going to now make another change I think I think Loftus-Cheek might come off for someone with a bit more energy but I'm not sure I'm definitely going to bring on Antonio and I think maybe Wilshire is going to come on too and he can swap with Suchek sides as well just because of their feet as well so and we'll get those more energy on the pitch and see what can happen Antonio who doesn't get many minutes but he still fights when if he does Wilshire now over to Erzy who I brought on as he does have a bit more energy I actually brought him on to try and get a result but Saar now through to Suchek and Suchek gets the goal what a ball that was from Ismaila Saar and now Suchek manages to get it 4-2 and what a resurgence in the game this has been, guys. From 3-2 to instantly making it 4-2. We're now getting the swing of things. Leicester, I thought, were going to cause us issues. This is a statement that we want your opening football. What a nice finish past Schmeichel. And, um, God, really just a tale of two halves this season, guys. Honestly, thank you all who have stuck through this. As I know some of you are getting fed up with me losing, but um, it seems to be all worth it right now. Suchek displaying the West Ham shirt. The players are now proud to wear the shirt. Eight goals for him as well. Him and Loftus Cheek really scoring when it counts. And um, that is now going to be 4 2. A bit of a cushion as well. Leicester cannot be too happy. And I think a lot of questions go to Brendan Rodgers. Why did he bring on Slimani for Loren, who scored two goals? Even though I took the mick out of Loren, he was causing us issues. So um, don't know what the thinking behind that was over, I think. That is going to be the full 90 minutes, guys. 4-2 against Leicester. I was doubting us for a point. I thought, oh, and this is the clear inconsistency of the team. But no, we actually do fight back. The team have some fighting spirit. Now, the team have some faith in what I'm trying to do. Five shots on target, four goals. We're being absolutely clinical, guys. And you can really put it down to players like Calvert-Lewin as well. Really 
being very clinical. That goal, really crucial as well, where he just barges off the defender, scores. And, um, yeah, we've got a tough game coming up next, though. It is away at Manchester United. We did actually beat them near the start of the season, which was in a very big upset. But now we're going to look to continue that. Get the double over United. That would be very good indeed. But, um, yeah, let's see how it goes. This is it. Big game against Manchester United in fifth place. If we could win this game... We would actually go within, I believe that is, six points of United, so not that bad. We would also actually know if we won this game, oh, we'd go three points within United, but they do have the game in hand, as do a few other teams. Wolves are three points behind us, but they have a game in hand. Also, um, Arsenal, we go level with them, but they have a game in hand. So a few games in hand for the other teams, but um, hopefully we can pick up what would be a pretty big upset. However, we have beat United before, so um, maybe, just maybe, we can um, pick up the upset again. Halea there, you can see him. He scores three to claim the match ball for Arsenal. Well, he's trying to prove to us that um, we should have maybe played him more, but he just wasn't working in this West Ham team, guys, and you can't say that Calvert-Lewin has really done it any worse than he did. So um, I still rate that as a good sale. 50 million we sold Halea for, if you remember, but... um. Yeah, without further ado, let's get into this game against Manchester United. You can see the teams, Fernandes, Martial, Rashford, Daniel James, Van der Beek. No Pogba, I believe he did get sold. Dallo at left back. Kappa, not too sure who he is. But um, yeah, still a strong United team, but maybe there's a few weaknesses there we can pick out and potentially get the win away, but it will be a tough task. Loftus Cheek, who's going to hit it over to his made a he's made a now to Calvert-Lewin, he's going to go inside, can he keep that, no he can't, he loses the ball, but um, Declan Rice is going to try and cut off some lanes, Martial now, over to Bruno Fernandes, Bruno Fernandes to McTominay, United playing some very nice football it seems, that was a pretty good ball to Daniel James, who controls it nicely, um, and Masuaku is going to have a real task marking him with his pace um, against us, but he does run in, Bruno Fernandes now, got the ball, he goes for a little fake shot, trying to show a little bit of... Um, Task and Fernandez does bury it in the back of the net, getting a bit of a own medicine, guys. United scoring a pretty early goal against us. Fernandez getting it, and um, yeah, I mean it's going to be a tough game away. Can't say we're done yet. McTominay actually the captain. That's quite interesting, um, but um, yeah, just a nice turn passing. Very good work to goal through our defence. Bruno Fernandez seven goals in the competition for him. And then we are going to be on the back foot, so let's see how the team does react. Over to Kabak, who do want to try and build up from the back. Kabak now over to Masuaku, who's going to hit that on the inside. Over to Rice, over to him. And now, I don't know what we're going to do here. Wait a minute, Suchek over to Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin, though, through to Loftus-Cheek. Loftus-Cheek's going to shoot, and that forces a good save from De Gea. Our best chance of the game. Loftus-Cheek was getting close. Very, very frustrating. Yeah, two minutes in. They're just going to have this one attack. They might even make it a goal of their own. And they have, I think. Yep, they've made it 2-0 in the dying embers of the game. The captain, McTominay, makes it 2-0. That's probably Manchester United's Europa League hunt um, secured. And, yeah, not great. I mean, we did just win two games. We beat Chelsea away and we beat um, Leicester as well. Too much to ask for this team to beat Old Manchester United at Old Trafford this time around. Nice finish by McTominay. And our players fall to the ground in defeat. But it's okay. It's not over yet. It's the league. We can still get 7th place. That's his first goal in the Premier League. And that is going to be it. 2-0 loss to Manchester United. Not the way that we really wanted to end this episode. But it's the way that we must. Um, I do hope you guys did enjoy this episode. Some real shock performances as well. We are really improving as a team despite this result. If you guys did enjoy the episode, please be sure to... Leave a like and comment what you want to see next season now as we are slowly approaching it. So let me know who you want me to sign in the summer window for that. As I do record some of these episodes in advance. So best let me know now. I hope you guys do have a nice day. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.